In these perilous times, see from current events how biblical prophecy is coming to pass in front of our eyes. You're watching In the Last Days, the program that looks at Israel and the end times with teaching from a Hebraic perspective. With Martin and Natalie Blackham, thank you to our friends and partners who make this program possible. Now, here's Martin and Natalie. Shalom, dear friend. This is wonderful to be able to be with you again today. This is In the Last Days TV program. My name is Natalie Blackham, and Martin is behind the scenes today on the camera. And this is wonderful again today to be able to have Eliezer Ben Yehuda. He was a guest a few times. He's the grandson of the Eliezer Ben Yehuda, who revived the Hebrew language. Eliezer, shalom again. Shalom, shalom. nice seeing you and wonderful. nice being with you. Yes, wonderful to be with you. Now the topic of today, we want to speak about Yerushalayim, Jerusalem. And uh, Eliezer is going to give us some uh, insight with the Word of God. And we are going to journey to Jerusalem today. Yes, in fact, we are going to establish the fact mm -hmm. that Jerusalem according to the Hebrew scriptures, is the center of the world. Uh, one of the interesting descriptions says in, in traditional Judaism that, uh, that God weaved the world like one uh, works with one needle, you know, when you do crochet work. Mm -hmm. And so God did a crochet and he started with Jerusalem and everything else, you know, came in round lines after it, bigger and bigger and bigger until he had the world, until he had the circular world. This is one of the interpretations, one of the ways that uh, scriptures and that Judaism looks upon the city of Jerusalem. And this is because of the fact, of course, that Jerusalem uh, for uh, at least 3,000 years if we just go to the historical reign of King David and King Solomon, was in Jerusalem. Jerusalem was the first town that was dedicated to be a capital city. It was not in the property of any of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. And therefore, it was a place that brought the people of Israel together. Now, there are some very interesting things to note about the historical Jerusalem. We'll talk about that. And then later on, we can also talk about the experience of my grandfather, Eliezer ben Yehuda, of the Jewish people in coming back to Jerusalem and everything like that. But let us start where most people begin, which is the first time that Jerusalem is mentioned. Now, it is interesting to note, first of all, when we talk about the Hebrew Scriptures, that Jerusalem is mentioned many, many times in the Hebrew Scriptures. But the Hebrew name Jerusalem, which is Yerushalayim, is actually not written that way anywhere in the Hebrew Scriptures. The second yud, the yud of im, mm -hmm. is missing. You see? Now, in the early scriptures, it is mentioned that Abraham offered his son at Mount Moriah, which is one of the three mountains that are the center of Jerusalem. Jerusalem was built upon three mountains. There was Mount Scopus, there was Mount Zion, and by the way, Zion is a synonym for Jerusalem, Ir mm -hmm. Zion, mm -hmm. and of course, the third mountain was Mount Moriah, upon which the temple was built. Mm -hmm. So it says when, when Abraham uh, uh, came to Jerusalem and his experience there, he said, uh, for in that place will God be seen. You see, and the word to see is ro'e, yira'e will be seen. Mm -hmm. So that's yeru from Yerushalayim. And then uh, shalem, without the last yud, mm -hmm. you see, means complete. 
God is complete in Jerusalem. Mankind is complete in Jerusalem. The relationship between man and God is complete in Jerusalem. And we would you know, see completion in Jerusalem also. Then from there, it will go, it will spread around the world. Again, like the crochet work. Mm -hmm. You see, when there will be peace in Jerusalem, it will be the beginning of peace in the entire world. This is why we expect Jews and Christians alike the coming of the Messiah in Jerusalem. The, the Messiah cannot come anywhere else but in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. You see, so all of that is there. However, when you start speaking about Jerusalem, and again, you look at the Hebrew scriptures as your text mm -hmm. to find out, to learn about the historiosity of the area, you come upon a passage in the story of the first battle that Abram the Hebrew, as he was called at that point in time, Abram the Hebrew lived in Elonai Mamre, which is near Hebron, the mm -hmm. city of the patriarchs, as it is called, where all the, you know, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob are buried. So in that place he lived, and a refugee from a war that took place far away mm -hmm. in the Jordan Valley came and told Abraham, the Hebrew, that his nephew, Lot, who lived in that area, mm -hmm. was taken prisoner as a result of the defeat of the king of Sodom and his companions mm -hmm. by Mesopotamian people, people who came from Tigris Euphrates uh, Valley. So it says that Abram went after them. So this is interesting also what you are saying is like the city of the patriarchs were Hebron. Yes. Because again, At that we time don't it was not Jerusalem. That's it. Because I mean, it's like we need to know how Hebron was so important. Yes, and it was absolutely. the capital yes. of yes, it was. right at the beginning. Yeah. Right. And then the next thing we're going to see when we, a little further in our story, is that the next important city mm -hmm. is the birthplace of our anointed king, David, which of course is Bethlehem. So again, we're not talking about Jerusalem. But it's only when David becomes king that all of a sudden we speak of Jerusalem. But in the story of Abram, we read about the battle against mm -hmm. the kings who took Lot. Mm -hmm. And Abram rescued his nephew as well as all the um, people that were taken as slaves from Sodom and Gomorrah and other cities in, the, in that area mm -hmm. of the lower Jordan Valley. Mm -hmm. Which and is so close to the Dead Sea now. Right, yeah. right. After, the, you know, after Sodom and Gomorrah were destroyed, then you have all of a sudden the Dead Sea there. But at that point in time, there were villages there, and it was a very fertile valley. And here we have a situation. There is a war. And the uh, kings that came from the north uh, defeat the kings in the valley, mm -hmm. and they take, uh, they take prisoners, and they take all the wealth of the cities, and they go back to their own towns. And Abram pursues them and attacks them, which was very brave. In the north of the country. Mm -hmm. And he attacks them in a place that is a place that is known as a point of um, battle today as well, mm -hmm. which is at the source of the Jordan River, where Syria, Lebanon, and Israel meet near Mount Hermon. Mm -hmm. You see? The source of the river, it says, by the river Dan, mm -hmm. you see? And he rescues the people, and he goes back down 
to bring them back to Sodom mm -hmm. because even his nephew doesn't want to live on the mountains. He doesn't want to go back with Abram to Hebron. Mm -hmm. He wants to go back to the was. place where he made residence, which is in Sodom. Mm -hmm. Let's see. And so Abram goes down there, and we read that he, uh, you know, he returned. This is verse 16 in chapter 15. And I'm going to translate it from the Hebrew, mm -hmm. so your text may not read exactly the same words, but you will see it's the same uh, uh, contextual matter. Mm -hmm. He returned the property and also Lot, his brother, and his property, and he also returned the women and the people. This is what verse 16 says. Okay? Mm -hmm. So where is he going to do it? Where they live. In Sodom. Mm -hmm. Now, if you look at the map, you will notice that he is in the north part, mm -hmm. right by the source of the Jordan. And, of course, you know that there is a Jordan Valley. Mm -hmm. Now, if you want to go from the source of the Jordan in the north, the easiest way to get to Sodom is to stay in the valley, follow the valley, right? Mm -hmm. But the next verse, we read that the king of Sodom came to greet him after his return from defeating Kedar Omer and the kings that were with him to the valley of Shaveh which is the valley of the king. Now, this tells us something here. You know, there's a clue here. Mm -hmm. There's a clue for us here, and nobody looks at it, unfortunately. What is the clue? What are we talking about? I'll tell you. Emek Shaveh. Mm -hmm. The word Shaveh has two meanings in Hebrew. One of them is worthwhile, and the second one is equal. You see? In, in, in Hebrew math, you know, if you say 2 plus 2 equals 4, we say shnaim u shnaim shaveh arba. Shaveh means equal, mm -hmm. the same as, you see. Mm -hmm. And, of course, also, when you talk about somebe something being worthwhile, you see, then you say uh, ze sefer shaveh. It means this mm -hmm. book is worth it. You know, it's, it's worth reading, you see. Shaveh, it's the same word. So, the word shaveh, this is the valley of Shaveh, which means that it's, and it, and it goes on to say, which is the valley of the king. You see, now why is the valley of the king the valley of equals? Because this is where he meets the other kings. This is where he meets the other people. You see, and why did he come out to this valley? To meet Abram. Mm -hmm. You see, he heard, Abram is coming back. It says in the, the verse just before it. You see, so it says that this king has gone into the valley of Shaveh. And then suddenly the next verse reads, And Melchizedek, king of Shalem, took out bread and wine, and he is the priest of God Almighty. Wait a minute. Who is this Melchizedek? You know, say, oh, this is the king of Shalem. And Shalem is half the name of Jerusalem. It's not Jerusalem, it's just Shalem, mm -hmm. because they didn't believe in God Almighty. But wait a minute, it says, he, the, my king, this king of Shalem, is a priest of God the Most High. Now, was there a priest the Most High at that particular time? Yes, there was. Mm -hmm. Who was it? Shem. Abram. Oh, sorry, Abram. Abram is the only one who worshipped and therefore was the priest of God Almighty. Mm -hmm. You see? Mm -hmm. So it says that. And so it says, here it says, the verse before says, the king of Sodom came out towards him. So this is the... You see? This is verse 17. This is chapter 15, verse 17. And in the next verse, it says, and Malkitzedek, the king of Shalem, you know, who is this Malkitzedek, king of Shalem? It's not Shalem, you see. 
It's the word, the meaning of the word shalem. Shalem means peaceful. It means complete. Mm -hmm. Let's see. So the king of uh, Sodom, of Sodom, mm -hmm. which is a not a worthy place. Even right from the start, it was not a good place to go. You see, this king is meeting a different king. He's meeting Abram. And it says this second king because it's the valley of the equals. So all of a sudden, Abram is also made to seem like a king. Interestingly enough, generations later, in fact, more than a thousand years later, um, a, uh, a, an early uh, classic European artist did huge tapestry and paintings and one of them and uh, on, on biblical subjects and one of them shows Abraham coming back from the battle with the kings and it shows him in clothes of the period as a knight in armor and things like that you see now what is he saying? What is the artist saying? Is that he is a knight. He is a king. You see, just like the term here. You see, so the the people who are writing the text, the Hebrew text, are saying, on the one hand we have, you know, this man, and on the other hand we have that man. Just like there is about, you know, a boxing match or something like that, you know, or a basketball you know, two teams coming up, you know, for the for their meet, you see. So also we have here these two great leaders. And he says, on the one hand, we have the king of Sodom. He came there. But he came there bare, you might say. Mm -hmm. He had to come there bare because he had been defeated. He was really the pauper king. You see, and on the other hand, you have my king, Malki. Malki is the uh, possessive, mm -hmm. my, yeah. my king. Mm -hmm. What kind of person is my king? He is a righteous man. Malki Tzedek. You see, it's not the name of a king. There is no, there is no mention of Malki Tzedek, and there is no mention of Jerusalem until the conquest of the land of Canaan, when David, 500 years after they conquered the land, is looking at the Jebusite city, the small city which had been established somewhere between the time after Abram and the time of the conquest. You see, So it was a small Jebusite. And the fact of the matter is that if it was a very important city, surely... Uh, Joshua would have conquered it as he conquered Jericho and other they cities in the area, yeah. but well, it wasn't. You're right. I mean, you when see. you go to, to look at the city of David now to visit it, it I was so shocked at the beginning to see how tiny... How small it was, tiny, and then it grew. Tiny, tiny, That's correct. tiny. That's correct. Yeah. And tiny and not interesting, because it was like... Absolutely. On, it wasn't Absolutely. interesting at all. Yeah. Until the Jews came there, until David came there, until... Solomon built the temple until all of these things happened mm -hmm. and until the Hebrew scriptures, not only the Torah, not only the five books of Moses, but the scriptures, the entire scriptures, the words of the prophet and all of that, and they all started to speak and to prophesy, you know, and they say, Shalu Shalom Yerushalayim, which doesn't mean, you know, pray for the peace of Jerusalem, but seek the peace of Jerusalem, which means become proactive for Jerusalem. Inquire what you have to do to bring yes, the peace in exactly, Jerusalem. Yeah. Exactly, you see. Mm -hmm. So we read here, and then we say, well, how do we know that this is so? Mm -hmm. So we read the following. This Malkitzedek, which is supposedly the king of Jerusalem that doesn't exist, he took out bread and wine, and he is the king of God the Almighty. But there is no king. I mean, he is the, the priest of God, God the Almighty. 
And then it says, Vayevarcheu Vayomer. This is verse 19 now. And it says, He blessed him and he said, Blessed be Abram to Lord Almighty, owner of heaven and earth. Okay? Who is speaking here? It's who's the if other it's, king. If it's, it's the king of the Sodom. other king, yeah. which is the king Sodom. of Sodom. You see, how do we know that? Because he goes on to, he doesn't stop, you see, and it goes on to say, and blessed be your God, who uh, is, is a shield against your enemies in your hand, and he gave him a tenth of everything. He is offering Abram, which is the peak of chutzpah, you know, the things that, that Abram is bringing back. He says, you know, a tenth of it you can take. This is yours. So, great, the whole thing is his. Mm -hmm. You know, what do you mean you're giving him a tenth? It makes no sense. Mm -hmm. but it's, and it certainly wouldn't be something that the king of Shalem, who is a priest of God the Most High, would do. Mm -hmm. You see. Then we go on, and it says, and Abram reacts to this. And it says, Abram told the king of Sodom, if he is with Malkitzedek, king of Jerusalem, how come, you know, what happened? All of a sudden he was transported, you know? Mm. All of a sudden he is now meeting the king of Sodom. And Abram says to king of Sodom, this is verse 22, I, left m I lift my, head, my hand to God the Most High. Wait a minute. I thought Malkitzedek is the priest of God the Most High. Mm -hmm. Why is Abram lifting his hand to God the Most High? Because he is the priest. You see? Mm -hmm. So it, it, we can see this whole encounter as a whole thing rather than the couple of verses where Ma Malkitzedek is mentioned as a parenthetical mm -hmm. little explanation. Oh, by the way, on the way to... Sodom, he passed by way of Jerusalem. Yeah. Which doesn't it's make like, sense. It's like if, you're, if, th if this ear is, is uh, uh, beginning to itch you, then you, you, know, you go like this in order to scratch it. No way. <laughs> and especially so, when you know how it is, like you have to go all the way up yes, to, to up nothing. The mountain, down the mountain. What for? And to nothing because it was, yes. it was tiny. And yes, yeah. precisely. You see? So it goes on to say, that he speaks to the king of Sodom and he says to him, what does he say? He says to the king of Sodom, I swear by God, you know, I lift up my hand to God, you see, owner of heaven and earth. If from a string to a shoelace mm -hmm. will I take anything from you? You see, the king, Malkitzedek, this, mm -hmm. this righteous king, yeah says to the king of Sodom, I don't want anything from you. I don't want anybody to be able to say that I somehow was enriched mm -hmm. by the king of Sodom. He says, thank you very much. Take all, everything that belongs to you. Just try to be a little more kind to my nephew. Mm -hmm. you see, maybe he said that in an aside, which is not in the text. You see, he says, don't you be able to say that you made Abram rich. Mm -hmm. Except, he says to him, except what the boys ate on the way, you see, and a certain reward that will be given to these two non-Jews, Agar and Eshkol and Mamre, three of them, who were, from were with him. They were from Hebron. Uh, Hebron. Mm -hmm. You see? And it's they very were chieftains. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's see. so exciting. So here is this is, this is the way I read it. This is not a traditional Jewish mm -hmm. approach. This is strictly my approach. I'm sure there are others who thought about it, you know, because I never think of myself as being, you know, uh, the light of the nations, you know. But it's not a prevailing way of looking at this. The interesting thing is, so people say to me, but how, you know, where, you know, you need some kind of a certain precedence, you know, if you, if you tell me that this is the way to read it, can you prove to me that there was no city? And then I answer, yes, I can. Mm -hmm. And the precedence is in chapter 22 when we speak about 
the sacrifice of Isaac. And if there was a king of Shalem and a kingdom of Shalem, you know, a city that was going to become Jerusalem, then there are two issues. One of them, the question of why wouldn't God say to him Jerusalem? And the second is, how would that whole business with the sacrifice going to happen? But we'll talk about that on my next visit. It would be wonderful. And you see, we can I always say we, have, we need to have eternity to dig in the world and to know more things. And living also here is, the, is because of that we love to speak with you and to give you uh, interesting topics because we can see when we live in the, in the land of Israel, you can see where is Jerusalem, where is Jericho, and suddenly you put the, the word in context. And, and sometimes we have make stories don't really go with the context when we see how Israel is. So we will see you next week, and it will be great. We'll carry on with Eliezer. And don't forget, we are living in the last days. You've been watching In the Last Days, a TV program with Martin and Natalie Blackham, the program that looks at Israel and the end times with teaching from a Hebraic perspective. If you would like to financially support the program or find out about conferences, meetings, or ministry products, then please contact us with the details on your screen. Visit our easy-to-use website at www.inthelastdays.com and register for our free e-newsletter. Get the latest news from Israel, product information, online video teaching, or watch today's TV program at a time that's convenient to you. Thank you again, friends and partners, for making this program possible. See you same time, same station for the next program from In The Last Days. Scriptures and that Judaism looks upon the city of Jerusalem. And this is because of the fact, of course, that Jerusalem uh, for uh, at least 3,000 years, if we just go to the historical reign of King David and King Solomon was in Jerusalem. Jerusalem was the first town that was dedicated to be a capital city. It was not in the property of any of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel, and therefore it was a place that brought the people of Israel together. Now, there are some very interesting things to note about the historical Jerusalem. We'll talk about that, and then later on we can also talk about the experience of my grandfather Eliezer ben Yehuda, of the Jewish people in coming back to Jerusalem and everything like that. But let us start where most people begin, which is the first time that Jerusalem is mentioned. Now, it is interesting to note, first of all, when we talk about the Hebrew Scriptures, that Jerusalem is mentioned many, many times in the Hebrew Scriptures. But the Hebrew name Jerusalem, which is Yerushalayim, is actually not written that way anywhere in the Hebrew Scriptures. Mm -hmm. The second Yud, the Yud of Im, mm -hmm. is missing. Mm -hmm. You see? Now, in the early Scriptures, it is mentioned that Abraham offered his son at Mount in these perilous times, see from current events how biblical prophecy is coming to pass in front of our eyes. You're watching In the Last Days, the program that looks at Israel and the end times with teaching from a Hebraic perspective. With Martin and Natalie Blackham, thank you to our friends and partners who make this program possible. Now, here's Martin and Natalie. Shalom, dear friend. This is wonderful to be able to be with you again today. This is In the Last Days TV program. My name is Natalie Blackham, and Martin is behind the scenes today on the camera. 
And this is wonderful again today to be able to have Eliezer Ben Yehuda. He was a guest a few times. He's the grandson of the Eliezer Ben Yehuda who revived the Hebrew language. Eliezer, shalom again. Shalom, shalom. nice seeing you and wonderful. nice being with you. Yes, wonderful to be with you. Now the topic of today, we want to speak about Yerushalayim, Jerusalem. And uh, Eliezer is going to give us some uh, insight with the Word of God, and we are going to journey to Jerusalem today. Yes, in fact, we are going to establish the fact mm -hmm. that Jerusalem, according to the Hebrew Scriptures, is the center of the world. Uh, one of the interesting descriptions says in, in traditional Judaism that uh, that God weaved the world mm -hmm. like one uh, works with one needle, you know, when you do crochet work. Mm -hmm. And so God did a crochet and he started with Jerusalem and everything else, you know, came in round lines after it, bigger and bigger and bigger until he had the world, until he had the circular world. This is one of the interpretations, one of the ways that uh, um, we read about the battle against mm -hmm. the kings who took Lot, mm -hmm. and Abram rescued his nephew as well as all the um, people that were taken as slaves from Sodom and Gomorrah and other cities in, the, in that area mm -hmm. of the lower Jordan Valley. Mm -hmm. Which and is so close to the Dead Sea now. Right, yeah. right. After, the, you know, after Sodom and Gomorrah were destroyed, yeah. then you have all of a sudden the Dead Sea there. But at that point in time, there were villages there, and it was a very fertile valley. And here we have a situation. There's a war, and the uh, kings that came from the north uh, defeat the kings in the valley mm -hmm. and they take uh, they take prisoners and they take all the wealth of the cities and they go back to their own towns and Abram pursues them and attacks them which was very brave in the north of the country mm -hmm. And he attacks them in a place that is a place that is known as a point of um, battle today as well, mm -hmm. which is at the source of the Jordan River, where Syria, Lebanon, and Israel meet near Mount Hermon. Mm -hmm. You see, the source of the river, it says, by the river Dan. Mm -hmm. You see? And... He rescues the people, and he goes back down to Moriah, which is one of the three mountains that are the center of Jerusalem. Jerusalem was built upon three mountains. There was Mount Scopus, there was Mount Zion, and by the way, Zion is a synonym for Jerusalem, mm -hmm. Ir Zion, mm -hmm. and of course, the third mountain was Mount Moriah, upon which the temple was built. So it says when, when Abraham uh, uh, came to Jerusalem and his experience there, he said, uh, for in that place will God be seen. Mm -hmm. You see, and the word to see is ro'e, yira'e will be seen. Mm -hmm. So that's yeru from Jerusalem, And then... Uh, Shalem, without the last Yud, mm -hmm. you see, means complete. God is complete in Jerusalem. Mankind is complete in Jerusalem. The relationship between man and God is complete in Jerusalem. And we will you know, see completion in Jerusalem also. Then from there, it will go, it will spread around the world. Again, like the crochet work. Mm -hmm. You see, when there will be peace in Jerusalem, it will be the beginning of peace in the entire world. This is why we expect Jews and Christians alike the coming of the Messiah in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. the, the Messiah cannot come anywhere else but in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. 
you see. So all of that is there. However, when you start speaking about Jerusalem, and again, you look at the Hebrew scriptures as your text mm -hmm. to find out, to learn about the historiosity of the area, you come upon a passage in the story of the first battle that Abram the Hebrew, as he was called at that point in time, Abram the Hebrew lived in Elone Mamre, which is near Hebron, the city mm -hmm. of the patriarchs, as it is called, where all the pat you know, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob are buried. So in that place he lived, and a refugee from a war that took place far away mm -hmm. in the Jordan Valley came and told Abraham the Hebrew that his nephew Lot who lived in that area was taken prisoner as a result of the defeat of the king of Sodom and his companions mm -hmm. by Mesopotamian people, people who came from Tigris Euphrates uh, Valley. So it says that Abram went after them. So this is interesting. So what you are saying is that the city of the patriarchs were Hebron. Yes. Because again, At that we time don't it was have not Jerusalem. That's it. Because I mean, it's like we need to know how Hebron was so important. Yes, and it was absolutely. the capital yes. of yes, it was. right at the beginning. Yeah. Right. And then the next thing we're going to see when we, a little further in our story, is that the next important city mm -hmm. is the birthplace of our anointed king, David, which of course is Bethlehem. So again, we're not talking about Jerusalem. But it's only when David becomes king that all of a sudden we speak of Jerusalem. But in the story of Abraham,